Hi, welcome to Easy Payroll Guide. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about how to use the IRS withholding tables to determine how much you should withhold from an employee's paycheck for federal withholding. There are two different methods, and in this video, we're going to talk about the wage bracket method. Whenever you're determining how much to withhold from an employee's paycheck, you need to make sure that you have the employee's W-4 form in front of you. This form will detail all of the information that you need to know to accurately calculate this tax. So this particular withholding form is for John Doe, and we can see from the form that he is single and he is claiming one allowance. The number of allowances is on line five. Now all of this information is filled out by the employee and you must use this information that they have given you. So John is single, claims one allowance. He is paid on a bi-weekly basis, which means that he's paid every other week. And for this particular pay period, his wages are $720. So this is the information that you need to know going forward. You need to know their marital status, how many allowances, what pay period you're using to pay your employees, and the amount of wages. Once you have this information, then you're going to go to the IRS website, Publication 15. Publication 15, starting on page 45, you will see the IRS table. And this is the table that you will use to determine how much tax to withhold. Now you have to be very careful because at the top of each table it will tell you the marital status and the pay period and both of these have to match. So notice that the first table is for a single person but it's for a weekly payroll period. Therefore we could not use this for John Doe because he's paid on a bi-weekly payroll period. So you would need to page down and they're going to go single and then married and since he's not married we're going to continue to page down and then we see single person bi-weekly payroll period and this is the table that we would want to use because both of these match our situation single and bi-weekly once you're on the right table then you're simply going to look for the wage now John was paid seven hundred twenty dollars which is down here towards the ends and notice here that it says at least and then but less than so this says at least seven hundred but less than seven twenty now since he was paid seven twenty we cannot use this top one we have to use the one that says at least 720 but less than 740 so this is the table that we would use and I have this on this page so you can see it a little easier so here we have 720 to 740 and this is the line that we would read now what you need to do now is say okay how many allowances so John had one allowance so we need to go to column number one up here and then go down to the line that was 720 so column number for one allowance says that John will be withholding fifty six dollars from his paycheck so that's how you determine how much to withhold from your employees paycheck you would need to withhold fifty six dollars from John's paycheck and pay that to the IRS on his behalf and you do that through your 941 okay so let's take a look at another example just in case you need one more example for example number two we're going to take a look at Mary Smith and Mary is married and she is claiming four allowances she has a few children so we know that Mary's married her withholding allowance is four she gets paid on a semi monthly basis which means that she gets paid twice a month usually it's the 15th and the 30th and her wages for this pay period are two thousand two hundred fifty okay so this is the information that we need to take with us as we go to back to the IRS withholding tables so you would go back and I'm going to continue to scroll down here we see single persons bi-weekly which I know that we do not need and married persons bi-weekly 
Here we have single person semi-monthly. So we have the semi-monthly pay period correct, but since she's married, we need to continue down. And here we have married persons semi-monthly payroll period. And so now we're going to take a look for the wages, and her wages were 2250 So I have to go to the second page of this table where I will find 2250 Now these tables are a little bit closer here. I see she's between 2240 and 2260 So she would be on this line. And I'm going to go back to my table here. So she is between 2240 and 2260 She falls right in the middle. So we will use this red line. And then again, we need to go up to number four because she was claiming four allowances. So if we go down from number four, we see that we will withhold $148. So you will need to withhold $148 from Mary's paycheck and pay that to the IRS on her behalf. That is her federal withholding amount. Okay, and that is for this particular pay period. If, if her wages change from pay period to pay period, then you would need to do this each pay period for the exact number of wages that she's paid. Now, you'll notice in the tables there is a point where if you make over a certain amount, like for semi-monthly married people, if they make over $2,920, then you will need to use the percentage method because this table does not allow for any amounts over 2920 So you would need to use a different method. And if your employee has more than 10 allowances, then you would need to use a different method because those are the limits for these particular IRS tables. Okay, I hope this helps you as you determine how much to withhold from your employee's paycheck.